Most people are bad negotiators. Just learning a little bit about it is going to give you an edge. If you follow this method, you will not always get your way, but you will get your way more often than not. And when you do, both parties will be happier for it. When you don't, you will avoid the pain of partnering with those whom you can't win. The key to negotiating win-win solutions is quite simply understanding and empathy. Now I know some of you are natural empaths and you're gonna to say to me, but I already do that. The truth is you must do that at a deeper level for yourself, but not coming from a place of insecurity. Let me explain. Many codependents or empaths, they negotiate poorly because they understand and sympathize with the other party while secretly hoping that the other party will do the same in return. Or they are unwilling to walk away when others clearly don't. This is why they get exploited and end up feeling cheated. They don't know how to advocate for their own needs and for their best advantage. Often they've been trained in childhood to do the exact opposite by betraying their own needs and feeling selfish when aiming for their best advantage. Meanwhile, the narcissists they attract feel no such guilt and use that to their advantage. Here's a tip. To be a better negotiator, you cannot give yourself away, have boundaries, and maintain them. Here's how you do that. To negotiate well, you must first understand yourself, second them, and third the situation. Narcs often do this kind of investigative work of learning about you, your needs, and their needs in the situation. They do this work, but not for altruistic reasons. They are very conniving people. And unfortunately, whoever does the most research usually has the edge in negotiations. So do more homework, but for altruistic reasons, not egotistical reasons. So let's go a little deeper into this first about understanding yourself. Well, you got to know what are your limits? How low can you go? How much can you give or sacrifice? So you don't later on regret it. What do you need? If it's about money, how much do you need? Be clear about your needs and your limits to avoid resentment and bitterness later on. Can you honestly align with this other person's incentives? Can you align their incentives with your own? Or is there a misalignment? Are there irreconcilable differences? Are there gaps in your understanding or beliefs that you just can't bridge? For example, they're never going to change and neither are you. You're at a stalemate. And if that is the case, well, you got to consider an exit plan. And unfortunately, this inability to exit, know when you got to exit and actually do it, know when to walk away, right? Like the country song, no one to hold them, no one to fold them, no one to walk away, no one to run. <laughs> that is something that empaths tend to be really bad at. So another thing that you've got to understand within yourself is, you know, are there trust issues? Can you really trust this person? Can they trust you? How can you or they gain trust? Are you willing to ask for more than you want is another good question. This is good uh, to, you know, create some wiggle room in negotiating without, you know, feeling guilty. So could you could you actually push the envelope and ask for a little bit more so that if they don't give you all of that, it's still okay because it gets to the level that you actually want, the bare minimum. Maybe you can't ask for less, but should you? Don't betray your own interests. Advocate for them. Remember, someone who loves you will take your best interests as their own. And if they don't, this is going to be a really telling moment. You're better off knowing the truth sooner than later that you can't win with this person, particularly if we're talking about really close, intimate relationships, which could be, you know, family, very close friends, you know, love partners, things like that. Second, understand them. What do they perceive to be fair? Realize. It's not about what you think is fair. It's really also about what they think is fair. And because if you violate their perception of what they feel is fair, then the deal can fail for lack of trust. Might be good to test them to see if you can get them to say no. Like, where is their limit? Where are their boundaries? How low can or will they go? Without being offensive, of course. You don't want to be, you know, putting one of those offensive low ball offers out there that just 
you know, how somebody's scoffing at you, you know, like, how dare you? <laughs> Um, but do see, you know, where their limits are, where their boundaries are, how much are they willing to give and for how long? Also timing. Sometimes, you know, and I learned this being married for 20 years. Um, when you're trying to talk to that other person, um, what are they most or least likely to res resist you or cooperate with you? You don't have the big talk, right, when he gets off of work at, at night, you know, maybe maybe you find a time when he's been able to relax and unwind and he's in a better mood and then you have the big talk. You know what I'm saying? Timing is really important. Also learn what is influencing or motivating that person in their position. Find the hidden motive because sometimes it's not just in what they say. Go deeper. What is the motive behind the motive? Okay. Are they doing it because they believe that doing so is going to help them avoid some pain or bring some kind of pleasure. L let me give you an example. A lot of us, we, you know, if we're out of a job, we'll, or we don't like our job, we'll say, well, I need a job. I need a new job. I want a job. But do you really want a job? I mean, who wants a job? Actually, what, what you're really saying, what most people are saying when they're saying that is, I want to be able to pay my bills. I want to live comfortably. Okay. And so we, we have to look at this when we're trying to negotiate people. They say they want A, but what they really want is B, C, and D. Okay, it's layers. It's stuff, the stuff underneath it. And maybe they're going after that one thing because they think that doing so is going to bring them all these other things that they actually want that are motivating them. But what if their belief is false? What if you can have a talk and say, hey, I, I see what's motivating you to go after A, but hey, there's this other strategy that can get you there um, without you having to do that. Have those deeper talks about the motive behind the motive and, and find out, yeah, is it because they're trying to avoid some pain or bring some pleasure? Is, is it a cost or something else? Or do, do they have some deadline or a sense of urgency or pressure that they're trying to answer to? Get it out on the table. Find out their hot button issues also. This is going to really require you to have quality conversations. Find out in those conversations how you can sweeten the deal for them. Can you bring in more options or more resources to sweeten the deal for that person? And I gotta say, if you can't get them to open up about their motives, um, well, they're hiding something, obviously, and you have no trust. And without trust, a relationship can't endure over the long term. So consider how you can build trust, like I said before, but if ultimately you can't, this is a red flag and a tip to you that you need to get an exit plan. Thirdly, understand the situation. Is there an inability to give resources? Maybe there's a scarcity issue or an inability to agree. You have a difference in ideology. For example, somebody in the dynamic is saying, I can't or won't give you what you want financially, emotionally, relationally. Perhaps you're going in two different directions in life because you have different values in life. Are you in the situation of trying to negotiate out of necessity? Is it being forced upon you, in other words? Or is it an opportunity, a choice? For example, divorce, you know, that's where an agreement is required, right? That's kind of necessary needed to make that negotiation. Whereas deciding if you're going to continue on the relationship or have a temporary breakup, <laughs> right? That, that That's a choice or maybe um, an opportunity, okay? So look at the situation and try to understand it and then proceed incrementally assessing your needs, their needs, and the situation from a place of understanding and avoid those red flags that I mentioned before about them not opening up about their motives and that indicating that there's a lack of trust or the two of you are at a stalemate and either way you need to get an exit plan because these are red flags. Also, avoid quick deals. If it's a really good deal, it shouldn't be, you know, you got to act now. And we don't have time to talk it out and think it through and come up with plans and understanding. You just got to do it without all the information. This is a red flag. Keep asking questions if somebody is coming off with a, you know, trying to get you to make a quick deal. Keep asking questions. Keep building rapport. Be a good listener. Also, let them be the expert. Some people say play dumb because people like being the teacher. And so you taking this kind of teachable posture in your communication style with this other person is going to help you gather that research that is going to give you the edge in negotiating. And try to keep the tone friendly, focusing on what you both have in common, your position, their position, and establishing a personable approach of your needs and their needs and working together as a team to help.
each other accomplish these goals. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the next video in the series, I'll have it here as soon as it's available. In the meantime, if you want more resources for empaths, click here. And remember, I've got my book available on Amazon. And I appreciate all your likes, shares, subscribes, comments down below. Thank you so much for your support.